It's America's dirtiest debate ever. A raging controversy over... How often should you bathe? Me? I enjoy a hot, steamy shower. But some of Hollywood's biggest celebrities have recently made some downright dirty confessions. Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher made headlines when they admitted to only bathing their kids when they see dirt on them. Dak Shepard and Kristen Bell agreed that they wait for the stink. And leading men Jake Gyllenhaal and Brad Pitt have also copped to having very relaxed bathing routines. So, are they onto something? We're putting it to the test with our seven day no bathing experiment. Just wait till you see the shocking results for your skin and hair. How long could you survive the stink? We challenge two couples who currently disagree on how often they should be bathing to live one whole week without a shower. Let's see how they managed. We are ready to take on this Dr. Oz's seven days. Wait, seven days? No, no bathing, bathing experiment? Seriously, seven days? I'm just getting home from work. I feel like I've been sweating all day. I feel kind of icky. I feel fine. I know, you're pretty much used to this. I got up and I'm ready to take a shower and then I remembered I can't. Wait a minute, you said no, you said no bathing. Dr. Oz didn't say anything about pool water. Feeling like I actually want to take a shower now. I've been dying. Like, I feel like every day I'm just sweating and I want to take a shower at night. I do have a lot more time on my hands when I don't take a shower. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Taking the sheets off. I can't wait to get these sheets clean. <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. Right? Usually when I'm alone, the dog, Ren, is with me and he usually cuddles up to me. Do you want to see where my dog is now? Show your face, Ren. Oh, Kenny's coming home from work. Let's check on him. And nobody really hung around me as usual like they do normally. Oh, the other <laughs> kids didn't want to play with you. <laughs> I feel like I'm greasy, sweaty. I'm over the whole thing. How about you? Baby, do smell now. <laughs> okay, I kept my comments to myself, but yeah. <laughs> now I feel just yucky and icky. I think with all this oil in my hair, that these curls are gonna come out really cool, and at least my hair won't look that bad. Well, Dr. Oz, I'll smell, smell you later. later. <laughs> Maybe the one time during COVID, I'm grateful for the six foot social distancing on the stage. Please welcome the couples currently on day seven of no bathing, Danielle and Mo. That doesn't oh. smell so bad. We'll get to that. I am six <laughs> feet away. We got Bambi and Kenny here. Danielle, Mo, let's start with you. The biggest obstacle you guys have had since you've embarked on this voyage of seven days with your new hygiene habits. I think the biggest obstacle probably was having to deal with each other and not really tell you how you really felt. Because she smelled after day one. Well, I, I don't think she noticed, but I definitely noticed the smell. That's a big disagreement. <laughs> I mean, Kate, what are the major differences you notice in your skin and in your hair? My hair, can't you see it? It's all slick. I have this natural grease gel thing going. My grandmother used to use those foam curlers. Yeah. I found them. Well, she had dippity do with this little thing. <laughs> I don't know if you remember yes. the gel. Sure. Well, I, I dippity done it myself with all the grease. <laughs> and it stayed a little bit. Did you like the fact that it had? Because sometimes, actually, I, I got to admit, I do this. I don't do it when I'm making shows. I get stuff all over my body and my hair. But if I'm on my own, you know, I'll wash some parts of my body. We'll talk about that in a second. But I actually like the, that my hair has feel to it. Well, I'll wait two or three days, but I don't wait seven days. Right. Kenny, how about you? You know, I didn't notice a big difference in my skin, but I feel like I have bad head all day long. <laughs> <laughs> For right. a week. <laughs> all right, so we've been taking a look at what happens to the skin and the hair over the last seven days. I want you all to welcome a good friend of mine, dermatologist, Dendi Engelman. So let's start with the hair for a second. What, what, what gives you? What, what's going on to our hair when we're not bathing it all the time? So it certainly depends on hair types, but you hit the nail on the head as far as with your scalp. I mean, it is good to skip some washes. And our natural oils are like our, our natural conditioner. I actually enjoy, as I mentioned, that feeling. However, the skin is, is actually a good way to start because we have a little replica here that yes. goes out with the body. And when you say we should think about our bacteria on the skin as actually being part of the garden, the yes. ecosystem. Yes. So we've got good flowers, beautiful flowers, and plants like weeds that aren't so good for us. Explain yes. this to us. 
So this is a little example of what's going on with the microbiome of our skin or the microenvironment. And it's really important to have good bacteria, which are the flowers, and bad bacteria always kind of creep in there, like the weeds. And so when we wash, we actually are, if we do it the right way, we're getting rid of the weeds, but we're keeping the good bacteria there as little fortress to try to fight off the bad bacteria. But when we over cleanse, we can actually eradicate everything there, good and bad, and that's when we get into trouble. Let me come on over here. I got a little demonstration to do with you. And I finally got you a little bit of soap with fragrance. <laughs> all right. So I want you to replicate what we all do. So for example, if you're showering, just let's say the first time in a while, so go ahead and shower it up there. So then what happens when you put just the right amount? Just the right amount, we get rid of the bad bacteria. So we, we weed our garden. And only the good is there helping to keep the bad things away. Okay, now keep going though. The way many people do it, you know, once a day, twice a day. And now all of a sudden, what's going on, Dendi? So we're getting rid of the, the good bacteria too. So all of our flowers out of our garden are gone. And then what happens? We have a lot of, of room for overgrowth. Well, this is the issue because you were doing this and basically plucking every one of those good bacteria and the bad guys out at the same time, right? They're all gone. Mm -hmm. So now you sort of leave, leave the parched earth uh, area where there's not, not a lot of stuff growing. And now you stop using your bathing material, as you guys did. So now after a day or two, what happens? You start planting things that maybe aren't in your best interest. And this can cause an odor that you apparently witness with each other. See that down there emanating out there, that little green stuff? Yeah, you don't want that stuff. That uh, can be toxic. <laughs> However, over time, what happens, Dendi? So then our good bacteria come back and we do try to get back into homeostasis and so we regulate our body. And so we we'll often talk about that. People say that they smell worse in the first couple days and that's because of the overgrowth of the bad bacteria. But then when the good bacteria repopulate, then we get back to a more normal state. Because the skin is pretty amazing at keeping the good things in and the bad things out, but we need to make sure that we're being mindful of the skin barrier in this microbiome. And if we're, we're smelling bad, we may be in imbalance. Our garden may not be balanced. Take it back to Kenny, he might appreciate it. <laughs> so Danielle, you say you picked up on your husband's odor a little faster than you were noticing changes in yours. <laughs> Yeah, I th maybe because I'm so used to him always taking a shower and always smelling a certain way. So when he didn't uh, start smelling what I'm used to him smelling like, I, pick I was able to pick up on it. Especially around day four, I really picked up on his hair stink. Sammy, <laughs> how about you? You don't notice the odor of Kenny a little faster than your own? Um, look at the height. <laughs> <laughs> That's this setup. I'm bigger, I smell more. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, Mila Kunis, Ashton Kushner, they're together. Are they, do they have it right? All these celebs we talked about that are all in the news now saying they are practicing some of these le less hygienic approaches? Well, certainly, you know, I, as a board certified dermatologist, <laughs> I want you to bathe your skin. But, um, you know, with children in particular, we tend to overbathe them. You know, it's not a bad idea to just bathe them when they're dirty or every other day. The reality is I have a three and a five year old. They're almost always dirty. You know, there's always something to wash off of them. But we don't have to over cleanse the skin. And that's the takeaway is that we want to make sure that the natural oils that are there to protect us aren't stripped away. And so no matter how frequently you are or aren't washing, we're always washing our hands. That's always key. Well, I would wash the key bits of the body too that tend to have more hormones, your underarms, yes. Yes. groin area. Yes, so that's really important. There's certainly a tipping point where we all need to cleanse, especially in those areas, to get rid of the bad bacteria and that fatty secretion so that we don't smell bad. All right, so we can do everything. Be tastefully odorous to our partners, but not too much of a good thing. All right, so what's the real answer to the burning question of how much should you shower? The definitive answer when we come back. We are back with the raging debate over how often you should be showering. Now, we promised you the definitive answer on this. So drum roll, please, Dr. Dendy. So the answer is if you're in puberty and up to 60, every day or every other day is perfectly fine. As we get into our 60s and older, our oil glands actually start to produce less oil. And so you can have a little more leeway. If you're not getting dirty, you don't have to bathe every day or even every other day. The natural oils are actually good for the skin. My, my rule of thumb is if I'm not working under a car or in a, in a tough basketball game, I can, I can skip a day. Mm -hmm. Over the next past, actually, you know, this has been true for everybody, but this past year has changed a lot of things. And women put down their makeup brushes and started prioritizing their skin care. Since the March... Uh, to 2020 date that we all will remember for the rest of our lives. Internet searches for self-care routines, that search term, 
saw a 250% boost. And while many used their extra time at home last year to focus on their beauty regimen, our next guest ditched her daily cleansing care and opted in for a more laid back approach. She actually stopped washing her face entirely. So Jalen, thanks for being with us. What prompted you to take such a drastic step and stop washing your face? Hi, so basically I've had acne my entire life since I was around 10 years old. And it just got worse and worse over the years. And in my early 20s, I just couldn't handle it anymore. I had tried literally everything you can think of to fix it, and nothing worked. So I was doing some research, and there was people saying how your body wants to self-regulate and wants to take care of itself. So just to drop literally everything. So I did. 30 days later, after doing nothing at all to my face, I had almost perfectly clear skin besides some um you know, like acne scarring or hyperpigmentation. But besides that, it was completely gone. So I was like, well, I'm not gonna quit now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's been, you know, two years now and I have almost perfectly clear skin. And, you know, it's just, I dropped literally everything to do that. Jalen, I'm proud of you. Yeah. You keep it up. All Thank right, so, you. so when did we decide to wash our faces differently? When did we decide what cleansers that might make sense? And are, all, are they all pretty much created equally whenever you do wash your face? So they're not, and they're really harsh detergents and cleansers that strip away everything. And we can see here, you know, this, this lady is beautiful and wears makeup and obviously wants to cleanse her skin and get the makeup off. But when we do really harsh cleansers, we can actually strip the skin of our natural oils, leave it imbalanced, and actually leave it dry and sensitive. So that's not a healthy state. We used to think that squeaky clean feeling was actually good. That's rendered a very unnatural, unhealthy state. So we want our natural oils on there providing help and a barrier to the skin against the outside defenses. So you want to stay away from stripping liquid cleansers. Okay, so I'm seeing these micellar yes. uh, products these days. And, and it's, micellar is a chemical term. It just means it like they surround the fat and take it away. But why are these micellar wipes uh, potentially ben more beneficial and what do they do? So they are, they're basically dilute baby shampoo. And oh. so they're very good for sensitive skin, people who have eczema, people who have different sensitivities or rosacea. They're not great, you know, oil and water don't mix. And if it's a water wipe, then it's not gonna be as great with dissolving oil-based makeup. So what do you recommend for folks wearing makeup if they have normal skin? What's the best cleansing option? Yes, so you, don't, you gotta stay with me here. It's okay. a little counterintuitive, and especially my patients with acne are like, you want me to put what on my skin? But oil-based cleansers are great for dissolving makeup because oil dissolves oil, like removes like. And so makeup is an oil base, and so oil-based cleansers actually remove that and so this is going to be a little bit mind-blowing but you want to use an oil cleanser to remove your makeup even if you have oily or acne prone skin. Do you think overall we should have a more relaxed skin regimen for all skin types? I do. I think that this past year, everyone's just been crazy with the self-care. And as you said earlier, the searches are through the roof with people wanting to do more to help improve their skin. But there's a fine line between doing just the right amount and doing way too much and actually causing harm. So I want people to be relaxed. And the takeaway from this segment, I hope people know that if you have dry skin, do not wash your face more than once a day. Even if you have oily skin, twice at maximum. And that should be the takeaway. I think maybe lots of folks who are in older age have actually adopted that for decades, yes. and it seems to have made them look better. I know. These old wives' tales actually have some merit sometimes. To find out your skin type and the cleansing care it craves, go to DrRoz.com, take the quiz, find out.